I was one of those children that decided at age six, this is what I was going to do and never deviated. So at six, I announced to my parents that I was going to live in a tent in Africa and I was going to take pictures of animals. And that's what I wanted to spend my life doing. I think my parents thought I would grow out of it. And I never did. I wound up doing exactly that. And now I travel the world taking pictures of animals for a living. And I think I have the best job in the whole world. So I've been a full-time wildlife photographer for over 20 years, and I specialize in baby animals. That's what I'm most well known for, but I do have a soft spot for strange and kind of quirky animals. And the two of my loves in that department are sloths and pangolins. As part of my work with baby animals, one of the things I worked on for many years was animal rescue. And so I was shooting a story on a orphanage, a sloth sanctuary that was working with rescuing orphans in Costa Rica. And while I was there, I had the great fortune of a wild sloth on the property. The sanctuary had like a huge property of jungle and they did release sloths there, but the, there were also truly wild sloths that came around on the property in the jungle. And so I sort of switched gears and started working with her and her newborn baby. And one of the things the sanctuary did is they assigned Becky to me. Oh, Susie, um, <laughs> where did it begin? I first started working with sloths 15 years ago. I was a very young research student back then. And I met Susie during that first year. I was working at a rescue center and Susie came to photograph a story on um, sloth rescue. So I got put in charge of taking care of her at the rescue center. <laughs> and immediately we became best friends. Um, we connected and I think during that first three weeks, we spent almost every single day out in the jungle together, just lying on the floor, looking up at sloths at the tops of trees, trying to take good photographs of them. And yeah, during those first three weeks, we hatched this crazy plan together that we wanted to travel all over South and Central America and photograph all six species of sloth. She regaled me on all these amazing things about sloths. And I think it's fair to say I completely fell in love with sloths, saw them as this really mysterious species that people really didn't know that much about. And also that there were some serious threats facing these animals that people also didn't know about. It's very difficult for us to portray what's happening to sloths to the wider world. Our overall objective is to try and help to safeguard a future for sloths. So to try and keep the populations healthy and sustainable and to also help people coexist alongside them. So if we look at the leading threats to sloths, we know it all comes from humans. It all comes from the unsustainable development of the rainforest. The leading cause of death for sloths is actually electrocution on power lines. As sloths try and move from tree to tree in urban areas, they'll often climb on the lines to try and get to where they want to go. But over 3,000 sloths are electrocuted every single year, just in Costa Rica. Um, it's a big problem. So we work with the Electricity Institute to try and add insulation to those power lines and help the sloths move around safely. We also try and give sloths different ways to travel that aren't on the power lines. So if a sloth does need to cross a road, then we'll build a wildlife bridge to help it get to the other side. A lot of times sloths do need to come down to the ground, so we have to make sure that the ground is as safe as possible for them. And that means that we need to educate people, whether it's local people, children or tourists, we do all of that. And we also try and reduce the threat of dogs because dog attacks are a really, really big problem for sloths too. So we castrate dogs, rehome dogs, and we offer free dog training to people in local communities in Costa Rica. One of the things that happened very quickly in Becky's work is that she expanded her work to include conservation, not just hard science. And she started the Sloth Conservation Foundation that I helped her with from the beginning. So I've been a trustee since the beginning and I've watched her grow that baby from it just being her in the organization to her, I think 17 employees she has now and then doing incredible work all over the Caribbean and Costa Rica. With the guidance of people like Susie and having access to her photographs, we've been able to grow the foundation. We've installed over 300 wildlife bridges. 
We've educated over 30,000 school children. We've castrated, I think the total is over 15,000 dogs now in the South Caribbean. And on top of all that, we're still continuing to do groundbreaking research, the only research of its kind, looking at how habitat disturbance and rainforest urbanization is impacting sloths. For me, I was quite shocked at the volume. I think that's the thing that hit me in the beginning was how many animals were coming into the sanctuary and also the other rescue centers in Costa Rica. Becky's estimating, you know, in the Caribbean, they, they get about two or three sloths a day, which is just these numbers are shocking. And, you know, why are these animals coming in? I think imagery is really powerful. Having beautiful pictures that speak to people and, and connect them to an animal or a cause are really, really important. And it was very difficult for us in the past to try and portray what we are doing and why it's so important and why we need help. It was difficult for us to do that because we didn't have any images showing the problems or also even images of sloths looking beautiful in all their splendid glory. And so it's hard to connect to people and get people to want to help. So that's where Susie has really, really impacted our work. So I think, you know, some of the most challenging work with me and Becky and photographing sloths in urban settings have been the stories behind these images, right? But I think when you're working with any animal in an urban environment, you see the, the really ugliness sometimes of, of humans, but then you also see some of the stuff that is more uplifting. And that image of the dog with the sloth is an uplifting story. This is one of the reasons why I love it so much, because that dog didn't harm the sloth because she had been in a training program that was hosted by the Sloth Conservation Foundation to train dogs not to bother sloths that are on the ground. There's a lot of implications, I think, globally as well from some of these programs that are working with SLOCO, and they're, they're really quite powerful and having an incredible impact down in the Caribbean. So not only has Susie's photographs helped us spread the love of sloths all over the world, but they've also helped us to raise a substantial amount of money, over $100,000, through the sale of books and calendars. So Susie and I published a book together several years ago, which was a photography book all about sloths. And we've sold thousands of copies, which has raised a lot of money to help support our work here in Costa Rica. And our annual sloth calendar is a massive success as well. It's got fans all over the world. People have Susie's sloth photos pinned up on their fridges everywhere from Australia to Hong Kong. <laughs> When I found out that my photo was selected for Wildlife Photographer of the Year, I I was over the moon, obviously. Um, and I'm not saying this to be humble at all. I, I genuinely was so excited because I thought, okay, sloths are going to get some promotion here. Sloths are going to get a window of exposure so that the world can see what Sloco is doing and some of the th threats that they're facing. So that's what I was most excited about. This project is a fantastic example, probably the greatest in my career so far, of a collaboration between science and conservation, Becky's work, and art and photography, my work. And the two coming together is really where the success happens. I picked up a camera when I was six years old and went out into the backyard and photographed birds and squirrels. And for me, the world completely opened up. For me, it's a way to help record wildlife and conservation. I hope my photography work is contributing to positive change in the world. And I do believe that Wildlife Photographer of the Year has helped me do that.